Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's, it's, that's very kind of you, and, and it's uh, wonderful to see you, to be here and experience your energy and your commitment, and to have the opportunity to spend this morning with you. Thank you for everything you do as part of this awesome, awesome coalition that is making a huge difference on, uh, in every part of our world. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts. I, I want to acknowledge uh, Joan for her leadership. Joanne, you've been uh, a great leader and someone who is willing to take on uh, you know, the mantle of change and the need for us to constantly improve the way we work so that we can assure you that when you're advocating for more resources, more focus, more effort to fight against the consequences of extreme poverty, that those of us tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that those resources deliver results are, uh, are holding our own feet to the fire every single day. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about a little bit this morning. I'm thrilled that uh, my friend Seth Berkeley and my other friend Jim Kim are all speaking with you this morning about what's possible, because what is now possible is genuinely extraordinary. Uh, this is a photo of a mother in Kenya in a Gavi-supported health clinic. No one in this room needs uh, further convincing that the effort to get every child on this planet safe, effective vaccines to save their lives is amongst the most cost-effective things we can do to make the world a better place. Your efforts in this results conference comes at the start, the very beginning, of, for us, Child Survival Week. This is an incredibly exciting uh, week for us, as Joanne just noted. As we outline a new approach uh, to our work, some big goals that we hope to achieve lie just ahead. And for us to be successful, you have to lead this effort. When others are cynical, you have to see possibility. When others believe that our politics are incapable, you have to force people to work together. And when others want to slow down and wait until the next election to get things done or to put resources into saving children's lives, you have to insist on performance right now. In the 1980s, and I have faith in you, because in the 1980s, your efforts secured tens of millions of dollars for the Universal Child Immunization Act, getting more than 10 million children vaccines and saving 125,000 lives. In the 1990s, you organized over a million people to hold a candlelight vigil across 75 different countries, helping to create the first ever UN World Summit for Children that created the foundation for the Millennium Development Goals and gave us confidence that the world could come together around those big, grand aspirations. And over the past decade, and even at times of great fiscal constraint, you've garnered significant support for, as Joanne noted, high-impact interventions that expand access to the things that work, from vitamin A to low-cost vaccines to malaria bed nets, so that more children survive even if they are poor. And for those efforts, you've earned a reputation of strong bipartisan support, of speaking truth to power, of insisting on results, and on making sure that your elected leaders continue to actually lead. And so, as you go into what I believe is something on the order of 300 meetings on Capitol Hill, I want to encourage you to play the role that you've played when David Obi was chairman of the Appropriations Committee and created the first ever Child Survival Fund, to play the role that you played when Nancy Pelosi first created funding for an international HIV AIDS effort, and to play the role that you played in bringing together Senator Leahy and Senator Coburn to successfully lobby for an increase in malaria funding for the first time in a long time just a few years ago. Those are important wins, and you have a moment right now to build on that legacy of success and performance. Thanks to you, for the first time in history, truly for the first time in history, we can envision a world 
without child death and mothers dying in childbirth at large scale. It's an extraordinary reality. And when you understand, as you do, what that actually means in the lives of families all around the world, you know that that will create a more stable, more just, more secure world in every part of the planet. This next slide, let me see if this works. There we go. This next slide is a mother and a child at a hand washing and sanitation program in Burma. And in the past, we have too often focused on specific initiatives in specific areas and failed to bring them all together to explain to the world what's possible when we bring together our all too fragmented community. Instead of lobbying for a single disease or a single intervention or a single solution, when we come together around a major millennium goal, when we come together to do something as grand as en and as important as ending preventable child death, we can get that done. We now know that there are proven solutions that have been around for decades, vitamin A, oral rehydration, zinc for diarrhea, that can reach children and help them and help us save more lives at dollars or pennies per dose. We know that in the critical window of a thousand days, we can provide the nutrition so children have the basic immune strength to protect themselves from simple diseases against which they would otherwise die. And we know that trying to simply address diseases without also making sure these children are well nourished simply won't achieve the outcome we seek. And we know that healthy behaviors, such as the one being promoted in this photograph, are essential to success, even if we have enough resources for the commodities, the drugs, the diagnostics, that are often what we talk about and price. It's ultimately the way people behave that determines whether or not our goal, our shared aspiration of ending child death, is actually possible. This week, we will launch a child survival report and initiative based on two years of work since the child survival call to action here in Washington in June of 2012. And what's happened since then? At that meeting, more than 80 countries, members of the faith community, members of the private sector came together and said, it's possible to end preventable child death by 2030 or 2035. Since then, more than 176 countries have signed the pledge to lead this fight. What that means is nations like India and Ethiopia, both of whom are represented here again this week, created report cards moved resources from middle class and upper class communities to reach the very poor, moved resources from things where we couldn't count the impact of the investment to reaching children with proven interventions that save lives, in India's case, in 132 target districts where children were dying at too high rates relative to the rest of the nation. Countries across the board, I went to visit Yemen on a visit that was not supposed to be about health. And when I got there, President Hadi told me, you know, I got a health minister and a whole team there that were at some meeting you hosted. They're inspired. They want you to sit down with them so they can show you their child survival plan in Yemen. And we want to show the world that even though we're going through a difficult political crisis right now, we can lead on behalf of our children, our women, our families, and our part of the world. That's the kind of country leadership that you've inspired, and that's the kind of country leadership, thank you, that can help us all achieve this goal. So then the next question is, what have we done as donors, as partners, as uh, initiative leaders to do our part to help these countries that are now committed that now have plans, that now measure and report on results, that now bring their private sector into the system to co-lead these efforts with them. And the answer we will unveil on Wednesday. We had a review conducted by a blue ribbon panel headed by Ray Chambers, the UN envoy, special envoy for Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, as well as a panel that includes distinguished private sector leaders such as John McGrew and Jeff Walker, 
former members of Congress, such as Senator Bill Frist and Senator Harris Wofford, health and development experts, such as our favorite people, Paul Farmer and Helene Gale. And we narrowed our effort. We said we're going to focus. We shut down health spending on maternal and child health in 20 plus countries around the world in order to focus on those 24 that account for more than 70 percent of all maternal and child deaths. Because if we're going to spend our money, we want to spend it where it's going to deliver the biggest impact and the biggest amount of lives saved. Because we learned, because we learned we can deliver better results in partnership with the private sector, We've embarked on hundreds of new public-private partnerships, some new ones I will announce on Wednesday, to bring big companies and small local entrepreneurs into the tent of people fighting against preventable child death and doing it with a focus on logistics, on operational excellence, and on reaching those hard-to-reach children that are very, very far from where there are health services that can help them save their lives. And later this week, we'll announce an additional $500 million award to help make sure that the technical expertise and the measurement systems exist so when America leads an effort to end child death, we have data and results to show for it. Those are important efforts that will help us ensure, as our report will illustrate, that the expanded investment we intend to make over the next 18 months will save significant number of additional lives. And it'll be the first time, and I think this is important for you as you're up on the hill and as you're talking to potential supporters, it'll be the first time in a while that the United States of America will be able to say that for every dollar we spend on child survival, we can measure the attributed amount of children that, whose lives we are saving. And that we are maximizing against that number because we've reviewed more than 260 grants and contracts and we'll be reallocating billions of dollars from things that did not allow us to guarantee results to things that will allow us to quantify the number of lives saved. That is a little bit technical, uh, and folks don't want me to get into too much detail here, but I know that that means a lot to you. And I know that you need to be able to go on Capitol Hill and say, America can lead this fight for the next 15 years because we're putting in place a management system and a technical capacity to lead it with absolute results-oriented excellence. Here's, here, is what, here is what that then looks like when we're successful. These are, uh, this is a chart that just shows you what uh, the pace at which child mortality can come down between now and 2020. When we're successful, when we come together, these results can be remarkable. If you, you, you look at that chart, you will notice uh, the lines kind of get steeper at this point in time, right now, because that's when we're reallocating resources. That reflects an almost 40% increase in spending on maternal and child survival under President Obama than in the past, if you look at the last four years and compare it to the four years previously. That reflects the new technologies and the new business orientation towards saving children's lives that we are now, as a global community, capable of. And while I like the charts and the data and the points at which curves get steeper, what actually matters is that for millions of parents around the world, they will no longer have to endure the unspeakable tragedy of losing children to diseases we know how to prevent. For mothers, it means the confidence to plan for their families and not be afraid as they go in to what should be a special moment of giving birth, but in too many parts of our world is still a moment of absolute fear and terror. And for children, it means the opportunity to pursue a full life. You can't go to school with debilitating illness. You can't learn if you're hungry. And you certainly can't imagine communities being stable and moving out of poverty if too many children die before they ever experience their fifth birthday. So thank you. Over the past decades, you've saved millions of child lives. Alongside our partners, 
we've driven down newborn deaths by more than a third by working together. Each day this year, 17,000 more children will live than 20 years ago because of, in part, your efforts and the movement you started. So as you go into this week, I hope you will remember that your leadership makes a difference. Your voice counts and needs to be heard. We can do everything we can as public sector managers of resources and in stewards of taxpayer dollars to make sure we deliver results and outcomes. But we need you to inspire the political leadership that now, not two years from now, not five years from now, not ten years from now, is the year to act to get that inflection in the curves. It's the year to act to make sure we have significant additional resources in child survival that can deliver results. And it's the year to act if we want to achieve the Millennium Development Goal and drive the goal further so that we genuinely end preventable child death. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. Okay.